Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. You know, I'm worried that once again we are not rising to the occasion as the American people continue to suffer from both this health crisis and the subsequent economic disaster, as the American people continue to call for justice for their fellow Americans, we are back here in D.C. for the first time in seven weeks, and not one item on the Speaker's docket is to answer the American people's call or provide them relief. I'm disappointed because I know that we can do better. 2020 has been a tough year, but we have seen some wonderful moments of bipartisanship. In the early months of this pandemic, Republicans and Democrats came together to pass the CARES Act, which created life-saving programs for small businesses and helped provide families financial relief. Additionally, in response to calls for nationwide criminal justice reform, I introduced the Bipartisan Justice Act, legislation co-sponsored by both Republicans and Democrats that will improve our policing and reestablish trust between our law enforcement officers and the communities they serve. Unfortunately, despite the Justice Act's bipartisan nature, Democrat leadership does not want to address this issue. Despite the CARES Act bipartisan nature, Democrat leadership continues to walk away from relief package discussions. Partisanship has once again taken priority over the needs of the American people. If the previous question is defeated, we will take up legislation that I introduced that will provide $850 million for better training of police officers, $500 million to increase the number of body cameras, and $1.2 billion in grants to police departments to invest in community policing, which is the philosophy that you don't police your community, you police with your community. I, set this on the, I said this on the House floor in August, and it's unfortunate that I'm saying this here once again in November. It is time for this Congress to get back to work. And I yield back.